listeners, and welcome to another episode of Extra Extra. It's all about whiskey. I'm your host, Jason Johnson Yellen, aka Jason Three Names. I'm joined today, and as always, it's so natural, isn't it? It's just such an easy thing to say mm-hmm. at the start of the podcast. But with me being the host in the passenger seat, mm-hmm. the navigator seat, mm-hmm. is the good Joshua Hatton, who at the start of COVID life, I referred to as the whiskey cherub. Yes. And you went so far as to make it your Instagram handle. And we're going to need something new for you because you're, you're not the cherub anymore. You are, you're, the, you're the whiskey racing snake. That's who you are now. Whiskey racing yeah, snake. The, the whiskey whippet. That, that, that makes sense. I'm, I'm not as... Now my hair is cherubic, but my face and body is no longer as cherubic as it once was. It's not. The cheeks are no longer as rosy. So anyway, the the whiskey whippet, whiskey is, uh, whippet, yeah, you know greyhounds, right? Yeah, yeah, they're the small greyhounds, the little ones, right? So, yeah. They go by kilometers. Sure a... I think the whippets go by kilometers, and the greyhounds <laughs> go by miles. Right. Yeah, anybody who knows dogs right now, you and me saying, yeah, whippets. So the small greyhounds, they will be pulling their <laughs> hair out. But you come for the whiskey, you don't come for the dog talk. So. <laughs> We we have an article, oh, to, to give the lay of the land, I, I should say this before we just jump in. In Extra Extra, mm. one of us brings in news article, often about whiskey. Sometimes we bend the rules a little bit, but we often bring a whiskey news article to the attention of the other. We read it as a class in the first half mm. of the podcast, mm-hmm. and then we riff on it, we chat about it in the second half of the podcast, and we try to get out of here in a tight 30 to 35 minutes. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we fail, but it's always in our hearts. And it's it's always around a quarter the length of one of our One Nation Under Whiskey episodes. (laughs) As close as we can get it to that. So this episode, we're actually covering a story that was sent to us. Oh, another story that was sent to us. It is another story that was sent to well, us. Look at that. Did we get to this one sooner than we got to the Richard Baum? We did. This came in just a few days ago, and here we are covering it almost oh, immediately. Cheapers. I didn't because, see that email. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't an email. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so my non whiskey loving brother sent this in from <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> We have a BBC article. I did see a few other people post this up on the the social medias, Mm -hmm. on the the Twitters. This Mm -hmm. got a little bit of traction. And there's a reason I want to cover this today, not just because it was sent to us by Murray. Uh, That's the name of my brother, anybody joining us for the first ever episode. Um, Not just because it was sent by Murray, but because you and I had a similar grumble about it. Yes. And I think it's a worthwhile grumble that we can really delve into. So the article comes from the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. And the title is Entire Whiskey Distillery Ships Out to China, which I have to say, BBC... I still live in a world where I expect much better from you than that. They're, that was so poor, as we will find out. Their headlines have gotten worse and worse and worse. But anyway, continue. Terrible. Absolutely yeah. terrible. And I'm even scrolling here to see if there's a name attached to this. There is no human name attached to this. Because this person was uh, so embarrassed of of the title they had to use. They said, don't attach my name to it. Makes me wonder if it's robot written or they just pulled it off the AP or something. Mm-hmm. But there's no additional byline, I think, is the, the technical term. Right. So, so to reiterate, we're going to read the headline again and then we jump right into the story. Entire whiskey distillery ships out to China. The article goes, An entire whiskey distillery is being shipped out from Scotland to China on Friday. So here we are recording this July 18. Friday would have been July 16. Mm -hmm. So that's how timely we are here. More than 35 tonnes of equipment including stills, flooring, control valves, and pipework, 
is leaving Bucky in Murray for the port of Tianjin. Tianjin. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. What, how, what does that mean in Gaelic? But no, it's going to China, so here we go. <laughs> doesn't mean anything in Gaelic. <laughs> the equipment will be assembled at a facility being built in Inner Mongolia. Wow. It's funny. We live in, we live in this global world, and I still think of uh, old expressions like Outer Mongolia, like... <laughs> When I was growing up in Scotland, if you know, if somebody was kind of making a, a wee jokey comment about the farthest you could go, yeah. obviously Timbuktu sure. is, is always From a classic. Here to Timbuktu, yep. Right? But Outer Mongolia, I almost feel like that appeared in movies and things like that. Like Outer Mongolia was like, how far? Yeah. How far? I, I'm, sure, I'm sure it was in the Maltese Falcon. I, I'm sure that's when they first brought it up. <laughs> Any Maltese falcon lovers out there, please write in and tell us if uh, Joshua is right or not. So inner Mongolia, it's not quite outer Mongolia, but even inner seems quite far away. Mm. You can't get to inner without getting through outer. Anyway, continue, please, Jason. Is that how space works? Uh, Isaac Asimov says so. Anyway, please continue. I only listen to Richard Branson when it comes to space talk. The shipment is part of a three million pound design and build deal signed between forfer firm Valentine International and China's Mengtai Group in 2019. Hmm. The facility in Ordos, and if we've got any Ordos listeners, um, I apologize if I've butchered the name of your of your uh, your town, your locality. The facility in Ordos will become Inner Mongolia's first whiskey distillery when it opens, probably at the end of this year. All of the distillery equipment was built by Rothis-based firm Forsyths, mm-hmm. which is sending a team of five engineers to supervise assembly. Forsyths have a team in Hong Kong to provide after-sales backup and services. Can you imagine that? That assignment that they got? Hey boys, we're, we're going to send you overseas. All right, okay, where we go? Australia, Taiwan, India maybe? Um, Inner Mongolia. Where now? Excuse me? <laughs> and and w- where is that in proximity to Timbuktu? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Inner Mongolia is between Outer Mongolia and Timbuktu. <laughs> That's how you find it on a map. <laughs> Valentine International Chairman and Managing Director, David Valentine, said the project was the brainchild of Meng Tai Chairman Ao Feng Ting, who planned to create, quote, a globally award-winning whiskey. Mr. Valentine, who specialises in establishing commercial ventures in China, said, quote, Scotland is the home of whiskey and has the greatest expertise in terms of distillery equipment manufacture, which is why Mr. Fenting believes we will deliver a world-beating project for him in Ordos, end quote. It is Meng Tai's first venture into the world of whiskey. One of Inner Mongolia's largest private firms, its core businesses include coal production, and electricity generation. Interesting. People love coal, coal-fired stills? Coal production. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I didn't understand it at first, but coal production and electricity production. Okay. Yeah. You don't normally think of production connected to coal. You think about mining connected to coal. You don't really produce coal. It's a, it's, it's a different English uh, than we speak over here in the United States, Jason. I don't know, the BBC. used to trust the BBC. Only a couple of short sentences to go here and, and we'll, be, we'll be out of the first half. Okay. In a separate development, Valentine International has signed, quote, a strategic agreement, end quote, with Meng Tai to supply bulk whiskies for China. Mr. Valentine declined to name the whiskey distiller in that deal, but said it was a, quote, 
long established, end quote, firm. Hmm. That's your article, pal. That's it in the can. God, it, it, that's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a suggestion of an article, right, that starts out with an entire distillery. Let's take a quick break here and I'll pick up this thread yeah, after thank you. a wee thank you. bit of music. Yeah. the thread that we that we put down mm -hmm. towards the end of the first half mm -hmm. this title you and i have the same response to this entire whiskey distillery ships out to china yeah Ye it, it made me think of deals where london bridge has gone to arizona <laughs> or burns's cottage has gone off to i think it was a place in the state of georgia uh, has a has a replica or something like that and and so you you hear of these deals where where people have purchased something in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and brick by brick it has been broken down and sent off to another locality yeah. and i think you and i thought the exact same thing when we saw entire whiskey distillery ships out to china now because I know better, because you know better, we would say, no, there's no Scottish distillery that is going to do that because Scottish distilleries produce scotch and you move it to Inner Mongolia and it's not producing scotch anymore. Um, and then there's many other obstacles, many other reasons why that would never happen, regardless of the outlet. It, it, could, be, it could be in the London Times, right? It could be in whatever. If they read that, high, that headline, not knowing better, they would think, oh my gosh, which one is it? Is it Glenn Fittich? Is it Glenn Livett? Did they move the Balveni? You know? That's exactly why I wanted to include this in today's Extra Extra, because you and I are, are deep into this industry slash hobby, mm -hmm. right? People who listen to this podcast are deep into this industry slash hobby. If you saw this go past you on Twitter or go past you on Facebook and you weren't deep into this industry or hobby, you would start to think to yourself, oh, an entire whiskey distillery has, has up and moved. Yeah, oh, so it's too, uh, too bad for it, Scotland. It, interesting. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but what really, you know, grinds my gears with that is we see the same thing happening in mainstream press about things like whiskey awards, right? Mm. Oh, no name eight-year-old blend named best in the world. N no, no, it wasn't. It was it won a medal within its category. Yeah. And that that's a really good achievement within its category. It wasn't named the best thing in the world. So don't you know, don't start thinking people who are buying three grand McGallans uh, are wasting their money for that reason. Um, there are a host of other reasons. So and so I do, I, I get a wee bit like anybody does who who knows a subject well, mm -hmm. I get a wee bit annoyed when I see it misrepresented Correct. and the stories that are then presented to folk who aren't within the hobby mm -hmm. or within the activity or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to, to pause us for a moment to say it's a bad headline for a host of reasons. It's also a continuing trend. You and I did this a couple of extra extras ago, didn't we? Mm -hmm. When we're starting to see the rise of alcohol blamed for bad behavior on yes. aircraft. Yeah, that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Right, and we're starting to see some articles this summer about, ooh, people are imbibing a bit too much. Right, it's, it's, it's too quick, right? The headlines are moving too fast mm -hmm. and they're not at all capturing what is in the rest of the article. This coming in from Murray was the, the latest example of that. And the unfortunate thing is that's, that is simply the trend, right? You, I, I thought you brought up a good point. The BBC was known for great journalism. 
And now it's these clickbait headlines. That's how, you know, the unfortunate thing about print going away is now all of these various outlets are desperate to find money elsewhere. And how do they find well, money elsewhere? By clickbaity co- content that advertisers want to advertise on. Well, and the the beauty of the BBC is it's funded by the government, right? And so everybody pays into mm-hmm. the journalism produced by the BBC. Yeah. And so if you watch BBC, either you know TV channels, the BBC News. Mm-hmm. There's no commercial interruption, right? And so you shouldn't need to behave a certain way to generate advertising revenue. Then you come on the website, bbc.com, and just like we gave our friends at Forbes a a hard time because you couldn't read the article because it all had ads round about it, there's an ad at the top of this bbc.com article. There's an advertisement down the side of this bbc.com article. That's not how the BBC should be operated. It shouldn't need to be clickbaity. Mm-hmm. It should be thorough. It should be precise. And it's not. That's another reason that I'm a wee bit bent out of shape. Oh, there's also an advertisement uh, halfway through the article <laughs> as well. So, And then there's another one down the bottom right. So there's at least four right right away. Take away the clickbaity headline. Mm-hmm. Is another aspect of this that I want to cover. Take away the clickbaity headline. And the story is, Forsyth's produced distilling equipment for new distillery in Inner Mongolia. That's interesting. That's interesting. That, yeah. that has my attention. That I'd like to know more about. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm interested... To have you keep going down that path, but there was there was something else in there that piqued my interest towards the end of the article. But but I want you to finish your thought before I bring this up. Good, good. So I was going to ask you here. We're now talking about the first distillery in Inner Mongolia. I'm you and I for years. Regular listeners of of our both our podcasts know this. Champions of world single malts, Mm -hmm. champions of world whiskies, Mm -hmm. Inner Mongolia. Any thoughts? From which perspective? I mean, obviously, I'm I'm excited for this because, I mean, geez, I I honestly don't, I don't know anything about Mongolia. I don't know what their climate is like. I assume it's something close to Thailand where it's, where it's always hot and it's always humid, but I think it's a mountainous region as well. So is it up high? Is it down low in a valley? You know, I think, I think there could be some interesting things coming from that. Um, well, then, and what size are the stills? It, right. What size are the what size is the mash tun? Right? It, it, yeah. did, did they make the mash tun? Yeah. Right? But... All we get is stills, flooring, <laughs> control <laughs> valves, and pipe work. Right? Yeah, but but Jason, I would expect that information to be included in an article that might show up, you know, on scotchwhiskey.com dot com when when that was an active website or something that was more specific to our industry. I would not expect a BBC, you know, online article to say, and these are the capacities of, of the stills and this is the size and the shape, you know. But, but, to, but to my point is if, if you're going to err on the side of clickbaity yeah. and you're going to go the wrong way, why not err on the other side and go nerdy, Right. And say we're gonna go with more information than your average consumer would want, but at least that information would be in there for them if they so desired to see, consume it. Yeah, see I, I think if if they're going to kick it off with a clickbaity headline, then they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't get nerdy, they wouldn't go to the nitty oh, gritty. No. What I would say is yeah, no, no, I know they, that. they missed some low hanging fruit to keep some others like us interested, you know, granted they didn't give us all the nitty gritty that, that you would have liked, but if they said, and the distillery had a capacity of X, 
then that kind of helps to fill in some some blanks and 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 get your mind going. At least you have another breadcrumb, you know. Yeah, and I actually within the article that we read today, there is a link on that design and build deal. Yeah. And when you click on that, it just takes you back to the announcement in 2019. And there's really no more information in that announcement than there is in this update yeah. that the materials were actually shipping on July 16. And so, generally speaking, un unless there is an industry article about this, and I, mm. I purposely didn't want to go with an industry article because I wanted to make these comments about the BBC article. Yeah. But unless there is an industry article, we don't know too much about this. This... You know, are, are they, and I'm just thinking out loud, are they going to make a single malt in these stills that were made at Forsyth? That's right? a good point. Forsyths don't just make pot stills. They can make other kinds of stills. That, that's an excellent point. Right. And then it does show the equipment destined for China was built by specialist firm Forsyths. And there's a photo of two pot stills. Oh, okay. But it's not necessarily connected to the project. It's not yeah. necessarily the actual equipment yeah. that was made. And the photo has come from Valentine International. It could be a stock photo yeah, exactly. that they use within their own brochures. So, okay. uh, yeah. I, I know there's something you want to pull us to towards the end of the article. So let me just throw something else at you before we then will okay. use you to tie up. Okay. This article did get me thinking, especially from the original clickbaity headline, I was thinking about our, our friend and good listener, Dr. Matt Bishop, mm -hmm. with his question on DNA and distillery DNA. Mm -hmm. And as I read entire whiskey distillery ships out to China, I knew there wouldn't be any information answering this next part. But it did make me think about what you and I discussed in the One Nation Under Whiskey episode where we had hypothesized. What would happen if you lifted an entire distillery, mm -hmm. bricks and all, and moved it to Timbuktu, right? Outer Mongolia, Inner Mongolia. Could you take the DNA with you? And you started to allude to this uh, in answering my last question, which was, what's the geography, right? What's the altitude? Where's your maturation happening? Mm -hmm. Like, I love the fact that even just a little snippet of thought about distillery DNA could still lead to those questions of where's it happening? How's it happening? Yeah. We're, 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 still, we're still playing around with that DNA question. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of but like... And to me, that, yeah. and that's yeah. fun, right? Yeah. That's fun. And, 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 that's, and that's what I was going to say. You know, there are... Uh, <sighs> I mentioned to you before we started recording, you know, I was doing emails on Saturday and one of my emails was, was to my old rabbi. And I know that my old rabbi and some of his friends really enjoy reading the book of Genesis because there aren't a lot of specifics. There's a lot to read into, <laughs> right? And And you can just go on and on and on about it. And I think the same rings true of this where... There's just so many variables. It's just a bit nebulous, and, and you could just have fun going on and on and and thinking what could be. Um, well, and we already do it in Scotland, right? Mm -hmm. What makes Glenfiddich Glenfiddich but Balveni Balveni? Yeah, right. And and that that is to the heart of the the DNA question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you could right lift, yeah. right? And if you could lift Balveni bricks and all and move it, gosh, quarter mile, half a mile, you know couple hundred yards, would you then get Balvenie being produced at, at Glenfiddich? Yeah. Seems blasphemous. You just brought up Genesis a moment ago. It seems blasphemous to ask the question of whether Balvenie could be produced at Glenfiddich or Glenfiddich at Balvenie. Oh, Jesus. We, we should stay away from that. Um, so <laughs> and on a Sunday, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing that captured my attention... Mm -hmm. was towards the end of the article, and maybe you can find it, uh, where it talked about 2019. Can you read that that sentence really quickly? So the line that you want to pay attention to is, the shipment is part of a £3 million design and build deal 
signed between four for firm. It's not easy to say four for firm, I'll tell you that. There's a little <laughs> bit of the red leather, yellow leather going on there. The Schumann is part of a three million pound design and build deal signed between four for firm Valentine International and China's Mengtai Group in 2019. That's it. That's that really captured my attention. Because here we are in 2021 and 2020, we all know basically didn't exist for the reasons of COVID and the massive lockdowns within the UK, especially up in Scotland. Now rewind the clock back to 2017, 18, and 19, and the backlogs you heard that Forsyth's had, where they said, oh, you you want a pair of stills, you're looking at a couple of years, you're looking at 18 months, you're looking at an extended period of time. And it wasn't just Forsyth's that was dealing with that, but Vendome and, and, and a few others. And so what I find so very interesting that this distillery equipment is shipping mid-2021 after a 2019 deal went into place and 2020 Mm -hmm. basically didn't exist. Are we seeing the backlog being caught up because there's a slowdown in distillery pop-ups production? Mm-hmm. Or the production of distilleries? Are we seeing a slowdown because things folded during COVID and 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 projects had to fall off the table, fall by the wayside, or what have you? I think that's a really interesting story that that I think is worth reporting on, worth worth looking into. What what is happening there where you had this extended lead time? that really, I think, got shortened for uh, a a panoply of reasons. Yeah, no, I think there is that, that definitely that part of mind where you see 2019 and you think 2021. And and you think, well, of course, this is them following up on the 2019 deal. (laughs) It's like, no, things just things just take a bit of time. But I love your questioning of if one were to reach out to Forsyth today, yeah. Would they offer you a still in 18 months? Would they offer you a still in 36 months? Uh, I, I, you and I will definitely be asking those questions of people mm. um, and see how things are looking uh, on that back end. I did a, a sneaky wee peeky here Ooh. at, yeah, I know, you know me, um, at Ordos, uh, Ordos, China. Yes. And so apparently the, there's a town of Kangbashi, which is in Ordos, in Inner Mongolia. And it says Kangbashi, a town in the middle of barren Inner Mongolia deserts, once found itself stuck with rows of newly built but vacant apartment buildings, hmm. earning a nationwide reputation as a Gai Cheng or ghost town. However, a prestigious school school has moved into the region and now home prices are shooting north Uh, and now you've got a distillery moving into that region uh, as well so uh, you know I'm not entirely too sure what size Ordos is as a region but uh, top quality schools like Ordos number one high school uh, which has sent students to leading universities in Beijing were moved to Kangbashi so there you go. Ah. Ordos, former ghost town, town on the rise. I tell you, I like that. That's a that's a, a feel good way to end this episode. Right? Former ghost towns now hustling and bustling, the universities there, people are learning, distilleries are being built, they're going to drink good stuff. I like this. Yep. Not not university just to be clear, uh high school. Oh, high school. But high school that sends Good students to there a good go. university. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, bit of positive news. Look at us. It's, we're known for our positive news. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Jason, take us out of here. If you'd like to send in a whiskey news story for us to consider, or, or even something a little tangential to the whiskey world, like Richard Baum did, please drop us a note at questions at onenationunderwhiskey.com. 
no E in whiskey, and we'd love to have a look at what has drawn your attention in the whiskey world or the tangential whiskey world. But until the next episode of Extra Extra, Joshua, I will say be careful with clickbaity headlines out there. Make sure you're getting the whole story. Make sure you follow up if you need to follow up. Mm -hmm. And let's all share accurate information with one another as we continue to explore and learn about this industry slash hobby that we all love and cherish so dearly. So well said. Read, read again. Look for other sources. I love it. Well, Jason, I raise my glass to you. And I say cheers, and I raise my glass to our listeners as well. Cheers. As always, cheers, listeners. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with another episode in the future. Cheers. Hello. (laughs) Okay, I get the counting is Sunday afternoon. But don't make the recording Sunday after that. <laughs> ah. Every day is like Sunday. Oh, I love it when Alan Partridge says, oh, yeah, that, that song, Sunday, bloody Sunday. Oh, I feel that. I really feel that. You just, Sundays, they're so slow, aren't they? Like, you just, oh, Sunday, bloody <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> oh, that character is so good. So uh, it good. just completely misses the point of a I fucking know. Irish massacre. <laughs> like it's, wow. <sighs> God bless. Him. Hello, dear listeners. 